her movie of them. I am your first fancy friend. And today we are working on a shadow box. This is the background. I'm just layering up the rocks. So this is the base layer. I'm going to map them out first. So this is a dark brown, just a wash. And then I will map out the water. And this background is going to be full. It'll take up the entire picture frame. And then I have a second layer with a one of the rocks in the ocean and a mermaid sitting on it. So sorry I've been absent. We have been busy here. Not necessarily with commissions, but just life itself. <laughs> so I apologize, BFF. This is a smaller rock in the corner. Just adding that second layer a little light. We'll add the color in. This is going to be the second layer of color and this is just a blue-gray to give the rock shape and some texture and I'm still working on the brown surface as it is wet so that way the gray blue kind of bleeds in to the brown You have to be careful not to pull up the brown detail. So, we've got the base layers to these rocks, the masking fluid. where all of the white in the ocean will be. There's obviously more white um, than just what the masking fluid is uh, saving us some effort or time, but I have a white kind of ink And that can be applied later, after the project's finished. So, not going to stress on every tiny white spot. So I think we might do more layers on the rocks. In the photograph, they're extremely dark compared to the water, but I also kind of want to start on the water as well, so let's map out the color of the water first. Let's 
So, I am working on a commission at the moment, and I need these colors for the commission. So, I'm gonna let them be and use my extra palette in here. I love this thing. This little insert pops out. So you have this area available and this area available to mix as well as these. The seal is really tight on this as well and I've forgotten about that and I sprayed down my paints once and when I opened it back up uh, I had quite a shock because I started painting with the thought that they were dry uh, half pans and instead they were still very moist and activated. Uh, it worked out but just forgot that this seal is very nice. <laughs> so with this extra insert we can map out the water color and it is very blue turquoise. So I'm gonna just play with my colors at the moment. I have this kind of green and then right beside it is a similar green. Just the slightest difference. And I might add sky blue, see what that does. It's very similar to a part of the ocean in this picture. of a difference. I'm going to use some Prussian blue. That would definitely work. Behind the water, in the deeper uh, parts of the ocean in the picture. You see, there's like kind of like a teal. Not sure how to get that color. If you've been a BFF for a little bit now, you have an idea that I am horrible at color theory. It's very similar, isn't it? Hmm. Little close. How strange. Nope. Don't like that at all. people order commissions, they don't always realize how much effort goes into pieces. That's 
quite a bit of prep getting ideas I didn't like that either especially if you're doing skin tones that can be a lot of prep work so in the picture now that this is kind of spreading and settling I think that will work fine for the lighter colors of the ocean so we can do let's build that up get quite a bit of it going and add I think it's sky oops okay. I think that'll work fine so, um, there's just quite a bit of prep that goes into those pieces. Right, so let's go ahead and move back to the picture and do some light washes. So this uh, there's quite a bit of paint on it, but I'm gonna try to just do a wash. So I'll dip my brush in my murky water just once and apply it to the top parts that are more dark so I'm just gonna speed this up for you BFF just up Continuing the blue color all throughout, keeping to the lighter tones of the ocean scene, and then creating a wash as well. So it's still the same color, just um, with more water added to it. That's the amazing thing about watercolors. So looking at it a bit closer, let's map out where the dark parts are. And they kind of start right about here and go up. And then, right here, they kind of stop. So all this, all of this is kind of light colored. So, if we water this down a little bit, it'll help with the flow, and we're going to be dark down here, and it kind of 
lightens up as we move up. So dark down here. Move it down this way. Dark, 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 dark. And then wash. And lighten. This has a little bit more color in here. This part here is like a little pool, so there's a little color in here. Washes out here. Oh, very nice. Not a extremely executed plan, <laughs> like I envisioned, but that is just fine. We're gonna wait uh, before we do a second layer to this dark side because there's a little bit of shaping uh, in the waves so we'll let that sit for a minute let's go back to the rocks and do another layer so for the rocks we had this dark brown colour which 
just a bare brown color. And then while the paint was wet, I just dipped in a couple of darker tones for the crevices before they got dry. Not being detailed because the water's going to spread it out anyway. So it doesn't really matter what we're putting in. Just adds some character to the rock. Gives it some dimension. And we'll go back over it as well. So it's not a big deal. This one stays fairly light only because the water is kind of going on it as well. Some like white foam possibly. But I think I might add some darker layers where I couldn't add some shape. So just kind of a lot here and there where the rock is wet. But I'll leave some kind of um, spaces where maybe light is hitting it. There's a lot going on on this rock. There's like a little divot here. This will need another layer on it because it gets darker. Probably come back to it and see what else I want to add to it. There's a lot going on on it, so leave it alone. This one gets dark as well. It's lower down into the water, so it's mostly wet. Um, I made this one grey. We can add a bit more grey to it by making a Prussian blue and dark brown mixture. Looks like there's a lot on this first layer. Come down in this little valley. It's another little So we're going to take a break from the rocks and go ahead and add another layer of water. When I add this layer, I am trying to not disturb the blue underneath. I just want the water to settle on the surface, make that teal mixture again, and drop it down in where the darkest parts 
of the water is. I'm allowing the paint to bleed out. When I first started painting watercolor, this would have been the scariest part <laughs> because I didn't know where I wanted the colors to go or how far they would bleed out. And now this is my favorite part, watching it move in the water. Kind of smoothing this back a little. Some parts of the water stay lighter. going to add finer details later after this dries where the waves and the motion are put in. This project has taken longer than I expected. I'm going to switch to my Escada. It's a little bit smaller and it's softer as well. The bristles or the belly brush can still hold quite a bit, but laying down the paint, uh, the brush is not as stiff. I'm just kind of putting in these shallow waves here in these nooks and crannies. Yeah, this project has taken longer than expected. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I just, I had such big plans for it, and I let it overwhelm me. The mermaid is featured in another video that I have, and I'm overthinking her tail kind of torn on what to do for colors. I originally wanted like a green tail, maybe a little bit more realistic, but the water is so blue-green, I'm afraid she'll just blend in. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up a little bit for you, BFF. I'm adding water as a base to this section here and then a much darker wash than the rest of the painting. This has a lot more of the blue in the teal as well as this is farther out in the ocean and it is darker and deeper than the rest of the piece. You can see the masking fluid showing up where those parts are going to stay white. You can also see I added more details 
to that layer just below it. The bottom part still needs finished as well. I also added um, a seagull detail. I realized that my mermaid is my second layer and I have nothing else for the piece. And I was thinking once it's all added together, it's going to be a little empty, maybe? I don't know how to explain it. Or unbalanced. And I plan on cutting the seagull out and putting him in the left hand corner. Alright, so this is my seagull. It was a scrap of paper that I found. And since I plan on cutting him out, it was perfect. I have this little kit with exacto knives in it. Pretty perfect for what I need. So I'm going to take one of them Doesn't really matter the size, I just need to cut this guy out So I'll go for larger parts first Sweeping planes, kind of cut around. I may have to go back over it again. I'm just, this will be too sharp to turn, so I'll just trip now. The feathers are going to be too difficult to go around, so I'll go ahead and just get as close as possible and then go back through. And the same thing, just trim that off so we can... focus more. So I'll go back over that in a minute. I did a covered bridge recently and the tree branches around the covered bridge took some time. So I kind of have a system now. Kind of wiggle back and forth. There we go. Perfect. Alright, let's work on these little tails. These feathers right here, try to get them to stand out a little bit. Because the paper is thick, sometimes when you cut at an angle you can still see white. So, to be kind of aware of that as well. I might 
touch up his tail a little bit, adding some color to the ends of the feathers because of, again, the paper is a little dimensional, so cutting it at that edge creates that white. So I can color that in just with some watercolor. But he will look very smart flying over the waves. All right, BFFs, this is it. The picture frame that is going to have this mermaid ocean scene. The glass is in the front view. The frame is made of plastic, I believe, and then it has a wood texture finish carved into it. The back has little tabs that can be bent upward easily take out the insert and then there's this kind of divider that keeps the art piece in the back away from the glass so I plan on putting the mermaid on the front near the glass the insert and then the ocean scene. I've already sprayed down the ocean scene with a matte finish to keep the color. We'll put a glue dot on the seagull and figure out his placement. So he'll be somewhere in this corner the mermaid in, then the ocean, put the back on, press all of the tabs down, and it will look something like this. The mermaid will sit here in this corner, and she can hang out with her seagull friend. So this is what it will look like, <laughs> essentially, 50% of it. We'll finish up the mermaid and add it in. Thank you so much for visiting BFF. I enjoy our time together, and I hope that you had a relaxing time watching this ocean scene begin to form with just some beautiful paints and some water. We'll see you soon, BFF.